Oh, there we go. Perfect timing, just as my washer and dryer went off. Uh, hi, I'm Jennifer Bartels, and I'm so excited to have my film AC in the Breck Film Festival. My head chopped off? All right. Uh, yeah, I'm really excited to have uh, uh, everyone see this film. Uh, it's, it's a relatable film about trying to follow your dreams and when do you keep going and when do you maybe give up? Uh, and uh, what it feels like to be isolated, which I think we all can relate to in these covid -y times. Uh, how have I been staying sane in COVID? Uh, lots of snacking and then feeling a little guilt and shame about that, which I'm working through in therapy. And then lots of running with the Peloton app, which I'm not sponsored by Peloton, but they have a free app you should try. Um, yeah, I wish people could be together right now, but I know it's better to stay safe and to wear a mask, do both those things. And one day maybe we'll all hobnob and sip and talk about our accomplishments and why our films are great. Uh, but seriously, thank you so much for allowing me to be a part of this and for the team I worked with. Thank you so much for uh, writing this really fun role uh, where it's, it's a lot of FaceTime for this gal. Uh, okay, thanks so much. Stay safe. Bye-bye. Oh, I can use the remote. All right, let's try that again. Bye-bye. Technology. Hey, Breckenridge, I'm Brian Elliott. I'm David Fagan. We're the filmmakers behind a little film called Age of Bryce. Uh, I'm in, in Waco, Texas. Dave? I'm in Bryan, Texas. So we're t Central Texas guys. And uh, let me just say we're stoked to be a part of the Breckenridge Film Festival. I have a soft spot in Breckenridge because it's a place I learned how to fall and then eventually ski. Um, but ever since, I've enjoyed coming even in the summer. So we love Breckenridge. Uh, a little bit about our film real quick. Um, you know, this film, why was it inspired? I noticed uh, this tension between when I was a kid and I loved running around. I could stay out late. My mom would just shout at me and she just let me free. And I know Dave used to build like skate ramps in his front yard. I mean, that's the way we grew up. But I noticed when I had kids that all of a sudden I turned into the Mel Brooks, Woody Allen version of a stereotypical Jewish mother where if my kid was like doing anything, getting a drink of water or stepping in the bathtub, I'm like, what are you doing? Like, you gotta chill. Like, I just also became nervous and I didn't understand where did that come from? And so this little film, we wanted to talk about that tension between being an adult who knows a lot of stuff, including what to be scared of, and a child that wants to break free. Um, it's for all ages. And I think you'll find a little bit of yourself in, in this film. It's quick, it's short, it's fast, uh, it's bright. And um, yeah, the age of Bryce is a uh, is a uh, is a great uh, tone for this uh, pandemic we're in in many respects. <laughs> but, uh, As we watch audiences watch this film, we notice if it's a family that you'll often see the mother pointing at the father or the father pointing at the mother, as in you're the paranoid one. And sometimes you'll see the kids pointing at both of them, saying both of my parents are, are paranoid well, crazy. So. We got to do a good run for a while, but then with COVID, all of a sudden our conversations changed. And so we've gotten to be a part of some festival Q and A's where um, instead of getting 10 minutes or 15 minutes because of a normal schedule, we've gotten to be on hour long conversations with other filmmakers and be a little more personal and intimate and, and hear other people's filmmaking it's stories. So. It's a little sad that you can't see other, uh, you know, co-workers or friends or family sitting in the audience with you. But uh, I do believe that it has opened up, um, a, some, in some respects, a more intimate experience by projecting these films uh, in your own living room. So uh, we love Breckenridge. We love you people for wanting to sit through our little movie and uh, we hope you have a great time. And hopefully a year or two from now, we can do it again and meet face to face. So thanks, we appreciate you guys. Yeah, thanks, guys. Hello, I am Bentley Heyman. I am the writer and director of the feature film Big Fork. We obviously wish we could be in Breckenridge to share this movie with you in person. Um, but we couldn't be more excited to just share the film with you virtually, uh, where we all stay safe and healthy, especially given... Um, the current pandemic and the current situation uh, that's going on in the world. We made this movie back in 2017. 
It took us a year as we tried to edit it. We couldn't find an edit. Post-production was a real pain. And COVID actually gave us an opportunity to revisit the movie and, and uh, put some of our favorite scenes together. It's a wedding movie. It's a hodgepodge of scenes with some really incredible performances from some amazing actors. I hope you'll love it. We wish we could be there. We're not there, but we wish we could be there. Um, and <laughs> that's all I got. All right. Uh, thanks so much for having us. We hope you enjoy the movie. Hi, my name is Galen Foley, and I'm the co-director for the film Born From Junk. Hey there, my name is Mike Horn, and I live in Crested Butte, Colorado. I'm recording this from my office here in Burlington, Vermont, but I really wish I could be out there, as I'm sure all of you guys do. Uh, but we definitely appreciate you guys joining in and supporting the festival online. We wish we could be there in person, but as you all know, COVID threw a wrench in those plans this year. But hopefully our first film won't be our last, and we'll have the chance to connect in person in the future. In the meantime, stay healthy, stay safe, and go ride your bike. Here we go. Hi, I'm Meredith Bragg. And I'm Austin Bragg. And we are the Bragg Brothers. We co-wrote and... We're going to do that one more time, because... Yeah. Hi, I'm Meredith. Hi, I'm Austin. And we are the Bragg Brothers. We co-wrote and co-directed A Piece of Cake. And we're from Washington, DC. Our film is about a dad desperate to find the proper cake decorations for his daughter's birthday cake. Only to find that they are illegal. And so he has a choice, break a promise or break the law. Well, I want to thank Breck for allowing us to show our film. It's been very exciting. Uh, to have our film on the festival circuit and disappointing to not be able to go to all of the festivals on the festival circuit and also really intriguing to go to every single one of the festivals in a virtual sense on the festival circuit. Let's say that we could be in Colorado right now. Okay. I would be enjoying the weather. Certainly. I would be looking at mountains. Yes. I would be wondering why we live in Washington, D.C. <laughs> but more importantly, we'd be meeting other filmmakers. Yes. Lovers. One day we'll get there. Just means we need to make another great film. Done. Hi, I'm Carrie McCarthy, producer of Morfar's View of the Winds, and I'm here with Mark Petrie, the director of the film. We're coming to you from Wyoming, just south of the Wind River Range, which is where the film was shot. Um, and it's almost going to rain, so if it rains in this video, that'll be nice. <laughs> yeah. Hey, everybody. We're so excited to be sharing this film with you at breakfast. This is the world premiere. so. You are seeing it for the first time, and uh, we can't think of a better place to share the film. It's about exploring the outdoors. It's about uh, the spirit of adventure and having a curious mind. Um, but it's also about, I guess, ironically, kind of finding ways to continue to explore the world even when your world closes in on you. And the main character, Morfar, uh, I think he illustrates that in a way that inspired us um, to go out and document him on this amazing journey deep into the Wind River Mountains. So if we were there with you, uh, we would be in the theater, we would be um, at the after parties and cheersing you and talking about films. Uh, so we'll be there in spirit. And like I said, we can't wait to share this film with you. Yeah, and even with everything going on, it's really great that we can still gather virtually and celebrate films and stories that inspire us. So we're, we're happy that you're here. And um, it's really about this community of film lovers and filmmakers that inspires us to keep making films like this. So we hope you enjoy. And if there's one thing we'd want you to take away from it uh, that kind of goes along with, I guess, the spirit of the festival, it's that curiosity is in the eye of the beholder. And when everything seems discovered, uh, there's always something more. So look closer, go further, and enjoy the show.
Hello, Breck Film Festival, Breck Film Festival audience. My name is Stephen Keep Mills, and I wrote and directed a feature, Love is Not Love, which I hope you'll see. Where did we shoot it? We shot it right here. Let's take the elevator, I'll show you. You don't have to wait long. You found me. <laughs> Frank? Yes, Frank. Yes. May I take your coat? This is Raina's kitchen. I can just put no, it here. No, no, no. Let me. Can you do the cork? I'm so bad with those. I don't want to break my nails. And if we come on in here, I'll show you our living room. <laughs> and the great iron staircase, which was the showcase of this whole apartment. Raina and Frank ascend this staircase repeatedly and fall in love. Look at this, pool table. It's like my grandfather's house. Joel, the narrator. Sex would have completed him. He hadn't gotten a new life, a new work, a new woman. Let me tell you where we are. We are at downtown LA, the brewery. It used to be a brewery for Pabst Blue Ribbon, and it was changed in the early 80s to a live workspace for artists. And it's 1,900 square feet. There are many, I think 400 different studios here. Uh, we shot two thirds of the film here. We shot all of Raina's scenes. We shot all the exterior New York scenes. And then the corridor scenes, uh, leading to the elevator every time Frank leaves Raina. So that's where we are. I wish we were with you. 9,600 feet above sea level. And what can we do? Being down here, we can wish a 9,600 <laughs> elevated wish and say thank you, Rick Film Festival. Hey everyone, I'm Joel Sambas, the director and co-producer of Tending Clouds, which is a short documentary. I'm here in Asheville, North Carolina, and I am so bummed that we can't make it to Breckenridge this year. Um, it's a we were there in, in a, with a film that we had in 2013, I think, and by far it was the most memorable festival that we had been to, and we loved it, and when we got the uh, official selection from them again, we were so excited to go there, but now we're not. So it just gives me more opportunity to uh, continue to do remote learning with my four children. which is amazing, uh, <laughs> but I can't complain because I have, my family and I have stayed safe and healthy and we have nothing to complain about in this time. And I know so many people have been through uh, much worse and ser had serious hardships. And um, I think with everything that's going on, I think that's why I'm so excited that this film is out there and because it's an important message, it's inspiring and it just, is an inspiration I think to everybody that you can do something um, it follows a young woman who is goes through such hardship but she turns around and she's now fighting and she could have given up she could have you know not helped anybody but she chose to be bigger than herself and rise up and do some great things so um, that's my plug <laughs> Um, but thanks for joining and supporting the festival. Continue to do so because Breckenridge is awesome. And I have nothing else to say, so I'll get back to being a teacher. Hello, my name is Dale Griffith Stamos, and I'm speaking to you from Santa Barbara, California. I am the writer, director, and producer of the short film Entwined, starring Michael Dorn and Suzanne Ford. 
It's a story of two people who find themselves standing in front of a painting at a gallery. He's black and she's white. They're in their 60s, but they realize after a moment that they know each other from way back in high school when they were boyfriend and girlfriend before racist bullies tore them apart. Now, Michael Dorn, you may know from the Star Trek series and films in which he played the character of Worf. One reason he said yes to being in this film is that when he read the script, he was struck by how this mirrored an experience that he, in fact, had had in his own life. I wish I could be there live with you all, but as most of the country, I am sheltered at home. Were I there, I would enjoy seeing other filmmakers' films, getting to know other filmmakers, getting to know audience members, attending parties and panels, etc. And I'm sure that all of you would so love to be there live as well, doing many of the same activities and meeting many of us in person. But I do know that the Breckenridge Film Festival is doing its best to make this virtual festival every bit as exciting and full of activities as along with of course all of the films and I so appreciate you supporting the festival and the wonderful film lineup of Breakfast 2020. Thank you so much. Hi I'm Aisha Adamo coming to you from New York City. I'm so excited to have my film, Dance Till Dawn, screen at Breck Film Festival. Dance Till Dawn is like a collection box of memories. It's a combination short film music video that takes place in 1919 in a Ziegfeld Follies type of world. So much was going on in America in 1919. Soldiers were returning from the Great War. A lot of laws were being passed, but not yet ratified. Women were gaining the right to vote, but losing the right to drink alcohol, along with everybody else. And as we've been reminded this year, the whole world was recovering from the 1918 flu. This film weaves in and out of thoughts and memories, focusing mainly on the lives of two performers. Sterling de Crecy, my character, is modeled after Marion Davies, and she's courting some career opportunities from a wealthy suitor. The other main character, Walker Kingston, is played by Jay Ward, and his character is modeled after Burt Williams, a famous comedian of the time and also the first person of color to be a member of Actors' Equity. His character encounters racism, even though he's had fame and success. In many ways, what's shown in the film are just flashes in the lives of performers of this time. But there's still a lot in there that resonates today, 100 years later. As I'm sure you're aware, New York was hit hard by COVID-19. Myself, Jay Ward, and a number of the actors you'll see in this film were all students of the legendary acting coach, Wynne Handman, who is founder of the American Place Theater and a World War II veteran. He was teaching acting class right up until the quarantine at the age of 97. In April, he passed away from COVID-19. So to have his work continue through the actors in this film, through a project like this one, being seen by an audience, it's truly a joy. I'm so delighted to be able to share this film at Breck Film Festival. I absolutely wish I could be there in person. If I were there, I think I'd definitely check out some of the gold mines in the town. I've read a little bit about the history of Breckenridge and the gold rush thing is totally fascinating. I like gold. But truly, I wish that attending Breck in person this year was a possibility not only to check out the gold mines, but also to check out the gold mine of films that are going to be presented in this festival in such a great environment. Thank you so much for joining and supporting Breck Film Festival. I'm so glad to be a part of it. Dear Virtual Pen Pal, when did you wake up today? Did you eat? What did you eat? I've been thinking. I have been doing a lot of thinking. And I think I'm tired of thinking. I think I'm tired of being inside on my phone. I think I'm tired of being outside. How is your confinement, isolation, social distancing coming? Picked up any new hobbies? 
dropped the whole picking up new hobbies thing. Yeah. Me too. But I'm here for you. Virtually. I miss you. Sincerely. And with love. Me. Hello, my name is Chris Kramer. I'm the writer and director of the film Gifts of the Heart and thrilled to be at the Breck Film Festival this year. Um, a little bit about me. I'm British. Some people might say very British um, and I'm not an actor. Um, I adore actors. Um, what I, I'm just in awe of them. Um, they have this ability to talk to a camera and uh, keep one's attention, keep things flowing, um, keep, uh, feel natural. I've got none of those things, so um, be prepared. Uh, um, but I'll have a go. Um, making this film was a joy, absolute joy. And the reason that um, um, I, I got so much from it was the collaborative nature of filmmaking. Um, any filmmaker needs the help and talent of individuals um, uh, in order to make the vision come to life. Um, a short film tends to require a lot of favours as well, <laughs> involving people giving their time for um, very little or nothing. Um, and I was really fortunate. I, I had such a great cast, um, great DOP, great, great team on set, the lighting, the producers, I mean, everyone just fantastic. And it didn't stop there. It was the, the editing and the, the colorist and the sound people. And, and so many people gave me um, their time and their talent. Um, so, um, wow, what's not to like about that? I mean, fantastic. And the final piece of collaboration for me are the film festivals. Without a showcase to see your film, really, um, there's no point. So um, I'm really excited to be at the Brick uh, Film Festival. And they've got some great films. Um, and if you enjoy what you see, and I'm sure you will, um, I would encourage you to donate to the festival because they really need support, particularly in these times of COVID where everything is so challenging. So thank you very much. I hope you enjoy my film and I hope that I'll see you in person another year. Thank you. Hi, I am Gregory Allen, director of the film Reparations, uh, coming to you from northern New Jersey. You know, I think of Colorado, I think of nature. And I believe if I were there at this festival, I would try to get outside and take in some of those trails and hike some of those while I was there. That's something we can all do because this is a virtual festival. So you can take this phone, your laptop, and you can go outside in nature and actually watch it. But whatever you do, just thank you so much for supporting them for supporting us filmmakers. COVID has made it a very tough year for everyone. Uh, filmmakers, it's really hard trying to get a new work out into the world at this point. We started submitting last spring, right as COVID was hitting. And as the uh, acceptances started coming in, so did the cancellation. So thank you, BFF, for taking this online, for sharing it with so many people, for you for supporting them. It's just um, really great that more people can actually see our stories at this time. As a storyteller, my goal is to get people talking and to start a conversation, and I hope that Reparations does that. You can either do that online, virtually, or with the people around you that are watching it with you there in your home. So thank you so much. Hello, my name is Piotr Dolewski, and I'm a director from Poland. Uh, right now, uh, we are in Italy with our movie. Uh, but we are very happy that we can show uh, our uh, our almost like a child in Breck Film Festival. Uh, it's really an honor. 
uh, it's also a, a pity that we are not uh, be able to to share our experience and to talk uh, face uh, to face but I hope that you all stay safety uh, so we made our movie two years ago and that wasn't like a normal and usual experience because of the mm, Polish independent cinema that uh, it's like uh, uh, there is no Polish independent <laughs> cinema so we did uh, a thing that was like quite, quite unusual uh, I sold my car uh, I just gathered people who really uh, loved the script and we went through uh, one house for uh, I think like 10 days and we were shooting uh, for 12 hours every day uh, but at the end of the day we were happy and right now there is like a sad time because we are uh, like separated from each other the, the covid times is like very hard but i hope that because of the movie we could like sh share some experience and we could spread like a good news that uh, the same issues and the same problems that we had earlier will come back <laughs> And, uh, and I think that uh, then we could communicate uh, over the movies. So if you have any questions and if you have any uh, like things you want to ask or, 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 or you want to talk about it, just feel free to, to contact me. Uh, and I hope that you all, uh, all are safe in your house and you're gonna watch Rotten Ears. So uh, keep your head up, uh, take care and uh, see you later in Polish. It's uh, do zobaczenia. Pa! Hi, I'm Jeremy Glazer and I am the writer, producer and actor from the short film On the Ride. I am coming to you from Los Angeles and wish we could be there, but thank you so much for joining and supporting the Breckenridge Film Festival. Uh, On the Ride is a story about Two people finding a connection despite coming from two different worlds and we truly feel like we can use more stories like that right now. Um, also wanted to mention that from the get-go of making this film we wanted to collaborate with underrepresented and diverse voices not only in front of the camera but behind the camera as well. 70% of our crew was female including our incredible director Jen McGowan who is also an alumni and award winner from the Breckenridge Film Festival. We also had our incredible director of photography and lead producer, uh, art director, production designer, lead gaffer, all incredible women that really elevated making this film. Um, also, our cast was either 100% LGBTQIA plus or minority, and it was just such a special collaboration with all these amazing people. Um, if we could be there in person for the Breckenridge Film Festival, uh, since our, our film is largely based around biking, it definitely would have brought the bike and jumped in the saddle and rode around the beautiful sights of Breckenridge. Uh, it would have been so incredible to meet and, and, and talk with all the other incredible filmmakers and audiences um, and just get to see the, the, the beautiful sights and people all coming together. Um, other than that, uh, if we can encourage you at home, uh, hopefully you're staying safe, but maybe you can also get out in nature, jump on your bike and, and then explore your neck of the woods and then come back and watch our film on the ride, as well as all the other incredible films that are on the slate this year. Uh, we just wanted to say thank you so much to Breckenridge for having us and congratulations to all the other filmmakers and we look forward to seeing you in the future. Take care. Hello, my name is Kevin O'Neill. I'm from Orlando, Florida. And I am the writer and director of the film Resemblance. I hope that you saw it, and if you haven't, please do go see it. Uh, it would mean a lot to me. You have no idea how exciting it is for us to be at this festival, to be at breakfast. Um, I want to thank you for joining and supporting this festival. Our film, Resemblance, has screened all over the United States and more recently in, um, in Monaco. And actually, I have a coronavirus story because <laughs> when I went to Monaco, it was back in February. And this is when the coronavirus had just started to break around the country and the world. 
and uh, we were on a flight on our way back from the festival and we were flying through from Nice into uh, Frankfurt Airport and that was where we were going to make our next leg which is the big leg back to the United States. In the midair, uh, the, the, uh, the flight attendant came on and said, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to uh, land the plane. Um, and I ask that you do not leave your seats. We have a suspected case of coronavirus on this plane and we're going to have to wait on the tarmac until the World Health Organization shows up. So we sat there for, it was an hour and a half, um, the plane in the middle of the uh, runway um, with uh, buses, long buses on both sides of the plane ready to take us away. I guess if they had found out that coronavirus was on the plane. Uh, very scary time because you got to understand this is right when this thing had started to happen. Uh, luckily they came back later and said, uh, hey, uh, turns out the guy does not have coronavirus so we'll be taking you in by buses to the airport and uh, we will put you on a later flight, which they did. If you feel moved by the films that you see at this festival, please consider donating. Uh, this festival is amazing and they uh, curate some of the most beautiful films from around the country and around the world. Much to do. I've been to Breckenridge many times. I've never been there for the festival. That's why I'm excited to be here for this. But uh, I've seen Colorado. I love hiking. I love horseback riding. I love white water rafting. There's so much to do in Breckenridge. So uh, if you're not able to make it this year, do come another time because there is literally hundred things to do. Just shopping. Just walking through the shops in Breckenridge all the way down uh, there's this whole drag, this whole street full of stores and shops and wonderful restaurants. So um, there's a lot to do. Uh, I hope you enjoy this festival. I hope you enjoy our film. And uh, thank you. Thank you for watching and thank you for attending the festival. Hey everybody, thanks for joining us. My name is Adam Wright, I'm the subject of this film. My name is Matt Jenkins, I directed this film. My name is John Steele, I'm a co-producer and co-writer on the film. This film is called Lessons on Fate and Falling. It's our first feature documentary film. We are speaking to you now from Montrose, Colorado. Uh, we're actually sitting at the exact spot, if uh, you get to watch the film, where Adam uh, recounts a lot of his story. Uh, we had some, some really emotional moments right here where we're sitting, and we hope that you get the opportunity to share and experience those moments as well. We want to share with you um, a couple of takeaways from the film that we think will enrich the uh, audience and, and film goer experience. So Adam, what's a takeaway from the film? Well, I think, you know, during this time uh, of COVID-19, it's a time of anxiety and, and even sometimes of divisiveness, but you know, we, we hope that this message provides a message of hope and, and an opportunity for people to see kind of the things that, that unite us more than divide us. What the global pandemic has, has showed us and reminded us is, you know, it's important to find those things in your life that ground you and that are your center and, and knowing the most important things. Through Adam's journey, we learn that his family and these boys are the most important thing to him and, and they were what drove him as he was laying by the river at the bottom of the Black Canyon um, and, and that's the most important thing and, and this film you know can help us through these times knowing to, to find that thing. Johnny? I think it also reminds us just how fragile life can be and how lucky we are to be here each and every day and to you know, to quote the uh, singer of Warren Zevon, enjoy every sandwich and enjoy every moment you have with your family uh, because our lives are fragile and can end quickly, um, unexpectedly. And when we get a chance to uh, survive and continue living our lives, we got to treasure, treasure every day. Thank you for joining us and supporting the film festival. We are so grateful and honored to have our film selected to be in Breck Film. We were overjoyed when we got the call that we were gonna to get to share this experience with you. We wish we could be with you in person for this event, but due to the COVID-19 social distancing requirements and to keep everybody safe, we understand we have to do this remotely, but we're glad we can connect through the visual storytelling power of film. Thanks, Thanks for, for watching. watching.
Hi, this is Amy Lerner, producer and co-director of One More Win. Thanks for supporting the Breck Film Festival and congratulations to the organizers on their 40th edition. That is an amazing accomplishment. I am so honored and as a first time filmmaker, super excited that the film was selected to be part of the festival. One More Win was originally planned to tell the story of a man named Drott Hall. He is a legendary figure in off-road racing and a true champion. We started filming and along the way, as often happens in documentary films, the story changed. Rod got a bit of news that uh, impacted not only his quest to set a record, but his entire life. And we ended up capturing a struggle that was at times, I would say even heroic and a true display of just grit, determination and straight up willpower. And it was an honor to be able to capture that story. Joining me on the directing side was a man named Richard Healy, who is a very, very talented director out of the UK. And he's got a couple of words about his experience with the film. My name is Richard Healy, and I'm a director based in the UK. Back in 2016, I had a phone call from an old friend of mine who used to work with me at the BBC, who had moved out to America. And he called me to say he had a neighbor in New York who wanted some help making a film and was I interested in helping. And I said, well, who's the neighbor and what's the film about? And he said, she's a Wall Street trader with no film experience. And the story is about an American off-road racing driver who I had never heard of. So I said, yes. And that's how I came to end up as the co-director of the film One More Win with Amy Lerner. Amy Lerner, it turned out, was one very determined lady, and Rod Hall, the person that the film was about, had an incredible story to tell. It's been a huge honour to be part of the film that we made for Rod, um, and it's been a huge honour to be able to tell his story, and it is a huge honour that the Brett Film Festival is going to be showing the film. So thank you. Well, we hope you guys all enjoy One More Win, and I have a quick request before we go. I was hoping after the festival in Breckenridge to get out and enjoy some of the great off-roading trails that are in the area. But unfortunately, since we can't do that, I want to ask that you guys all go out and in the name of Rod Hall, get some wheels in the dirt, kick up some dust, and have some fun. Thanks.